hill as well. I am um, trying my best luck here at my reverse engineering and being resourceful, but um, the uh, gear that I replaced it with was so um, wobbly and it was a millimetre too small. One millimetre smaller in diameter than when I needed it. So damn close. So, the gear I got out of a printer. The junk printer, I, uh, the hollow shaft, the shaft was too big, so I got a, um, a standoff from a screw that held a CD player together. It's a junk one. When I fried the circuit board in, but I kept the, the, uh, the casing. I cut part of the standoff that the screws screw into to hold it together. Stuck that fitted perfectly inside here. But then I drilled it out so that the uh, pin fits inside that. And it pivots on there. And I drilled out one of the uh, markings here. You see little circles on here, the markings. Little dots there, six of them. Well, I drilled one of those out. Welded a bit of plastic in there. It's a plastic uh, standoff that holds the uh, diffuser behind the LCD of a TV. Of an LED, LED backlit LCD TV. A little bit of plastic there, I just welded in. The theory was perfect, okay, it's going to work, but it gets to about there and it just demeshes and it just grinds. Goes around, that's probably, and it grinds. Just sits there grinding. So it's not perfect. It's a little bit more of a challenge than I thought. So damn good. My replacement gear. I have to follow an ordinary gear that's actually the same thickness as the original one. But I won't have to cut, cut it down. Maybe that will help a little bit. But the diameter, just the odd diameter, final diameter, is the same as the original one. Well, I'm going to have, um, what I'll try doing instead, I'm going to hot glue a bloody uh, bit of hot glue on there and see if it holds and I can mold it to shape. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll give it a try. I want to um, keep this whole thing going. I like this auto stop mechanism. It's really cool. Really cool to see it going. Yeah, I want to get that functionality back. It's a cool cassette deck. <sighs> bloody hell, these bloody stupid bloody cheese gears. Just so I can run quiet. But over 20 or 30 years, it just goes to crap. Typical planned obsolescence on Philip's behalf. It's a shame, it's a nice deck. It actually plays back really good now. Just the auto stop doesn't work. So you get the bit of cast iron there behind the bloody pinch roller. The uh, cap the pinch roller assembly there. It's the same capstan that the car head unit uses too. Same size capstan that's in the car head unit. Shame. Anyway, I'll possibly gotta get somewhere on this. Really want it working as good as I can get it like it was when it was new. Because I only played what two tapes back through it and the auto stop stuffed up. Yeah. Bloody planned obsolescence crap. Okay, viewers, we're not gonna believe this, but it actually bloody worked. Good old bloody hot snot to the rescue. Hot snot on there, put a blob of hot snot on it. As it started to cool, I ran it backwards and forwards across these uh, gears and it made it work. Now it fits. It molded itself to shape and it actually works. And I'm last, I don't know, but it works. The hot snot trick worked. Holy crap. This hot snot. The bloody shaft snapped off my cam. Look at that bloody thing. A bloody hot slot, eh? It's virtually the same shit anyway. I can't believe it. Hot snot. It's fixed it. There we go. Hot snot to the rescue. How long is that going to last? I don't know, but... <laughs> Bloody hot snot. There you go. Anyway, that's going to be enough for now. Thanks for watching.